I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible gonna live by what I see I'm not gonna live by what I feel Deep down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything oh, Through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible I'm gonna live by what I see Oh, I'm not gonna live by what I feel Deep down I, deep down I know that you're here with me I know that, I know that you can do anything Oh, through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Come on. Nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible ready today to believe, to believe in a God that can do miracles, to believe in a God that can turn situations around, can turn hearts, can turn lives around. I hope you came ready today to believe in a God that can do the impossible. And I have a very special guest with me this morning. I have our very own Tegan from Truco Youth with me this morning. <laughs> Morning church to Sunday service. Uh, church, I'll just ask you if there's any first time visitors to raise up your hand. I should just, just like give you a form to fill in. Any first time visitors in the house if they want to be brave to raise their hand. Welcome, welcome. It's super good to have you with us this morning. It's a very, very familiar looking first time face, that one, but <laughs> we just want to welcome you. And 
Yeah, we hope you came ready to believe and to receive today. And speaking of receiving, we just want to take some time to celebrate those that are having birthdays in the house. So if I read your name, if you could just stand for me. And we have Tumelo celebrating her birthday on the 10th of May. If she's in the building, if she could stand. And if anyone else is celebrating a birthday that I missed, if they could stand for me. Let's just take some time to pray for them. Father, I just pray that, Father, we just give them peace and peace more abundantly, Father God. Mm -hmm. That, Father, love, Father God, they pour out, Father God, in their lives, Father God. Work in and through their lives, Father God, that, Father, they may be a beacon, Father God, of hope for other people, Father God, to see, Father God. Father, may the light shine, Father God, Father, to see, and they may glorify you. In the name of Jesus, pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, church, I just want to remind you tonight, we're going to be having our soaking night service at 5 p.m. right here in the building. So come ready to receive, come ready to worship, to connect, to get in depth with the Holy Spirit tonight. This coming Saturday at 8 a.m., the dance team will be ministering at the beach at Guido's. Be, as I go up there for a walk, I uh, said afterwards, do come and join in so as we tie hearts together. Mm, I'm super excited for that. The dance team is going to do an amazing job, I have no doubt, and there's going to be an awesome prayer walk right after that. So I'm super excited. I can't wait to see all you there and to be a part of that ministry. And next Sunday, we have a very special guest speaker. We're going to have Pastor Carl from Grace and Truth. He's going to come and share a message with us next week's Sunday. So come prepared. Let's come and hear what God is going to share through him for us as a church. To all our volunteers, very special volunteers serving here at the church, we will be having a heart and soul evening on the 21st of May at 5 p.m. here at the church. Please do attend this meeting as we'll be speaking about heart matters and connecting with you. If anyone wants to join and serve in the church, there's opportunity for you to come. Mm, that's going to be awesome. So for all the volunteers, we can't wait to see you there. And then finally, but by no means least, church, we're going to be having another baptism service. Now, I don't know if you remember the last one, but it was amazing. It was powerful. It was such a special service to be a part of. So I'm super excited for the 4th of June when we have our next baptism service. With that being said, if you have not yet been baptized, if maybe you're thinking about it, maybe you just have a curiosity about what is baptism about, I want to encourage you, there's going to be a form in the Welcome Center. Sign up and we'll get in contact with you and we'll let you know a little bit more about what is baptism so that you can decide if that's the next step you want to take. Okay, thank you family. It's been an honor to give you the announcements today. So family, I just ask that you turn your attention to the screen as we give our digital announcements. Hey family, I'm excited to give you our weekly announcements. If you came with your children, there is a fun and safe children's ministry facility. We invite you to drop off your children at True Kids. Our vibrant volunteers are more than happy to help you at the Welcome Center for more information and direction. Every Monday at 5 p.m., the dance ministry team is meeting here at the church. For more information, please ask our volunteer at the Welcome Center. On Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m., Join us here at the church for our weekly prayer meetings. This is your time to worship and pray together as the Holy Spirit leads. Life group meetings will be running throughout the course of the week. We encourage you to be a part of a life group. This is an opportunity for you to connect with others, grow spiritually, and enjoy the life that is flowing in and through our church family. On Thursdays at 6.30 p.m., we have our worship band meeting. If you are musical, we encourage you to check out our worship rehearsals. On Fridays, our Truco Youth has a fun, vibrant meeting for young people every Friday here at the church starting at 6.30 p.m. Do come join them for loads of fun, making new friends, and going deeper with God. Finally, we also meet every Sunday morning for a pre-service prayer meeting from 8 a.m. until 8.45 in our conference center. Well, that's all the announcements I have for you. Please take note of these weekly programs and be a part of what God is doing in and through this church. Enjoy the rest of the service, family. Good morning, church. Wasn't it really great to see Monashe on bass? Yes. Uh, just now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Woo. Um, well, as you probably know from the um, uh, the announcements on the on the what's it called WhatsApp, um, Candice and I are the lead elders uh, this month, and um, 
so this morning we had to have a meeting with the leaders of the church and we, we sat in the office and, um, and then everyone went away and they said, you must stay there a bit longer, just think about what you're going to say. And, <laughs> and, uh, this is, and, and so I was in the, you know, in the big office on my own and um, don't worry, I didn't sit at the pastor's chair, I was too scared to do that. <laughs> um, but there was an anointing in there and um, I, um, I was looking out the windows uh, as you guys were arriving, and I was just just full with God's love um, that I hadn't experienced before. Usually on the way to church, um, you know, you're worried uh, about which kid is walking too slowly, which is walking too fast, and then you can't appear tense uh, in front of the welcoming committee. So then you relax again, and um, so it's quite a complicated process to come inside. But um, uh, for for me, yes, um, but. You know, the, 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 just such a sense of calm and peace as, as, I, as I saw you guys um, and just felt God's love for you. And, um, you know, we were talking about this and there's so much potential in this, in this room, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Um, each one of us has something um, with which we can, some talent, some gifts with which we can, some deposit of God which we, with which we can reach the town, reach the the entire world even. And um, so just remember that as you, as you worship God, remember what he's, he's done for you that, that, and what he's invested in you. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our heart. And um, we, we also sensed, and it was, it was also helpful to have a confirmation in the prayer meeting this morning. Um, I wanted to talk about the the king and link it to Prince, I mean, King Charles's coronation yesterday. Um, but I felt God saying no. Um, instead, I, I need you to to pray for my flock. I need you to to really lay my hand upon them this morning. And we know that um, Mareka has walked through a very tough journey physically, and then she lost her dad. So if anyone is in contact with Mareka, just let's, let's rally around her as a body of Christ. Um, we also have Anel, who's fallen and hurt herself, and a foot that's really sore. Um, and, and there's a sense of, of, of people journeying through some difficulty. We're just sensing it in our, in our hearts and our spirit that... People are journeying through some difficult times, and you're carrying something, and your turnaround is coming, but it's, it's a bit tricky right now. It's a bit like you're stuck in the mud, trudging through, but you're, you're still trudging through. And so this morning, when we, we go into a time of communion, what I want to, what I hope our heart is to do, is for anyone who is feeling sick and needing healing, anyone who is feeling broken, um, because it's just been such a hard journey to tarry through. Anyone who is is just feeling tired and worn out, um, we want we want you guys to come to the front as we take communion, and we want to to just really invite you to the King's table. Um, God, only two thousand people cracked the nod to King Charles's coronation yesterday. And yet, Jesus, the King of Kings, invites every single person. That is our King. And He is inviting every single one of us this morning to kneel before Him and to give Him everything that we can't carry. And He promises us in His Word, I'm going to read those verses, that He will listen and He will do what He needs to do that is the best for us. And so this morning, we really want to, to start our worship in this space where we come and meet with our King and we trust Him. We trust Him for our healing. We trust Him for our breakthrough. We trust Him for our, our finances. We trust Him perhaps at school. You're having a tough time. There are kids that are nailing you, bullying you, pushing you, pressurizing you. Your workload is too much. We want to, to tell you that this morning, the King of Kings, the King of Kings is here. And he wants to touch you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to set you free. And he wants to bring the joy back into your life. Um, and so if I go to Psalm, sorry, I know I've only got five seconds, but anyway. 
Uh, if we go to Psalm 33, I'm the opposite of Tess. I can't read with my glasses on. Um, so in Psalm 33 at 20, it says, we put our hope in the Lord. We put our hope. So it's an action of us placing it in his hands. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In, for, in him, our hearts rejoice. For we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord. For our hope is in you alone. And if you're feeling very downcast and broken, I encourage you to read Psalm 34. There's so many beautiful promises in there. Um, so that's our heart this morning. So as you've got your emblem, if you are needing an encounter with the King, if you are needing a breakthrough, if you are needing healing, if you are trusting God for it, I want to inc- invite you to come to the front as we take the communion so that we can all meet with the King of Kings this morning. Can we get can we get emblems? Sorry. Um. Thank you. Thanks so much. that that this is symbolic of the power of the king of kings we thank you lord that this is a promise a covenant between you and us it's a promise that will break every chain it's a promise that brings the kingdom of heaven down on earth and it's a promise that we want to stand on this morning as we take this communion lord jesus and we put our faith and our trust back in you lord So as we take on this bread, the body of Christ, we know that it was broken for us to set us free and to make us whole again. And Father, as we do this, as we put our hope back in you, Lord, we trust for wholeness. We thank you for healing. We thank you for provision. We thank you for breakthrough in relationships. We thank you for wholeness, Lord especially for these faithful ones who have stepped forward. We pray for an extra encounter of you this morning as we take on the communion. And Lord, we thank you for this blood that you shed for us, Jesus. You were on the cross and you looked at each one of us and you're looking at each one of these special ones right now. And you are looking at them and you are saying, I love you. I am here for you. I am here to bring healing. I am here to bring breakthrough. You are my special one. You are the delight of my soul. I would do it over again just for you. You are my special one. Whatever you are trusting me for, whatever you are needing me to do, trust in in me. For I am here and I want to heal you. I want to break these chains. I want to set you free. I love you. I am your father. And you are mine. And you always will be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we take the blood as a reminder of everything that Jesus did for us on the cross. And Father, we want to continue in the spirit. So you guys are welcome to stay here during worship. It is entirely up to you where you want to meet with your king. And Father, we want to keep in the spirit of worship as we bring our offerings to you, Lord Jesus. As we give you our finances, we're going to give you our hearts and our our minds and our worship, Lord Jesus. 
We want to lift your name on high because we know, Father, that there is a promise in your word that joy comes in the morning. And we are going to praise you in this, this storm. We're going to praise you in this, this valley, Lord. And we are going to lift our hands and we're going to lift our hearts, even though we might not see it right now, because you are the King of kings and you are faithful every time. And your promise is true, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 We're just going to have a quick time to take up the offering now. Stand up and continue our praise unto God. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail My God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends Oh yes I know I know how this story I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory 
I'm gonna see a victory, yes All the battle belongs to you
first living creature was like a lion, second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all round. Even under its wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him, who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him, who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being can we just sing that line one more time and then just transition be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens As your glory fills this place You alone deserve our praise You're the name above all names Be exalted now in the heavens As your glory fills this place You alone deserve our praise You're the name above all names Thank you that we could just spend this time with you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that you promised to meet us where we're at. Lord, your word says if we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Thank you, Father. We pray that you would be in this assembly this morning. This is all for you, Lord. This is all for you, Lord. Every voice, every musician, every song, every gift. We thank you, Lord, for financial gifts this morning. We thank you for the giver. Um, who's given we thank you that you are the provider and you give us seed to sow lord i pray that the seed would be kingdom seed that we plant in the right places and it would grow into a mighty tree thank you father i pray that for every giver that you would provide for them this month lord every all their needs lord that they would not lack anything lord thank you that even that you would bring an increase in jesus mighty name in jesus name amen amen Morning Church, you may be seated. Thank you, worship team. It was absolutely splendid. Right. Well, if you can just start by uh, putting up the slides, and um, I'm going to preach this morning on a, a, a message that... Um, I think it's appropriate for the week that's coming up. Um, we've got a big week coming up, and um, just as the dancers were there in the corner um, waving the flags, um, and I'm an art history teacher actually, and um, I've recently learned that a flag, me, uh, a, a standard, is the name for a flag. I didn't know that. Did you know that? A standard is a name for a flag, and so you're lifting up a flag. You are raising the standard already. And um, we, and yes, and, and that was great, and um, thank you for doing that. And we, um, as I said, Candace and I are taking over this, this month as lead elders, and uh, we're really hoping that uh, we're going to raise the standard. We're not going to, um, we know that our pastors are not here, and it, we feel it. We do feel it. We, we all feel it, don't we? But we are trusting we're going to raise the standard. Amen. Amen. You're all going to be part of that. We can't do it on our own. Um, and, and, and so it's an important week. And so this morning I'm talking about evangelism and world missions. Okay. And um, 
Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20 says, uh, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, now, I, I just feel that uh, Jesus has given us a job to do. Um, don't you? I mean, if, if we look at what he says here, um, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Church, we make disciples. We make disciples. Yes, Jesus makes disciples as we go and disciple our friend or the person we have reached out to, but we make disciples. If you don't believe me, go and read the Bible that says he has, made, he has given us confidence. He has given us the ability to do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Okay, um, all things are possible for him who believes. He has given us divine confidence. Yes, divine confidence. You see, I was not always the most confident person, but I'm here talking to you. Isn't that divine confidence? Okay. So he's given that to all of us. Okay, we are a priesthood of believers. We really are. And so he says, go and make disciples of all nations. It's you. It's me. That's you at the school. Okay, so I'm it's sure that um, all of you recognize the picture over there and that dear couple. Thank you. <clears throat> Best drink there is. All right. So I'm, I'm sure that you recognize the, that lovely couple and the picture next to them is a... Um, is a, is a picture of the, correct me if I'm wrong, the 2009 Mighty Men's Conference. Who was there? Please raise your hand. Hello, I'm sure there's... Yes, thank you. Okay, was, is, was that the right one where they had those hay, hay bales and you had to sit on the hay bales and tri- there were triangles, hey? And then you kind of... Uh, there was a stage in the middle. Was that the one? Okay. Anyway, I was listening to another talk he was doing the other day and he, he says that our words and our deeds must be the same. So, um, apparently, this man doesn't enjoy shopping. Um, he does many, many things well, but he doesn't enjoy shopping. So, he, sits in the car, he sat in the car, and his wife went to get the shopping, the groceries. I can't imagine what she, she was buying, but whatever she was buying. And she came back, and then he leaped out the car, and he opened the door, and he put the groceries in the car for her, and then he was opening up the car for, door for her to get inside. And... Um, at that moment, a young boy came up to him and asked, well, not a young boy, sorry, a young man came up to him and he asked, sir, may I, um, uh, would you be, I just saw what you did and I'm a teacher, would you come to my school and talk to the children about, about whatever it is made you do that, I guess. And so can you see that in that moment, his actions uh, spoke louder than his words. And this man has many words, but his action spoke louder than his words. And um, all right. And so wherever you, um, wherever you are, um, I'm a school teacher, and we have a very strict principal, a very good principal, and uh, she doesn't allow any litter to be anywhere on the, on the ground, on the playground or anywhere. And um, so the rule is if you see something, you pick it up. And I must be quite honest that before I even got to Port Alfred, the Lord spoke to me about picking up litter. Now, you may think this is is silly, but he really did. I would sometimes walk past a piece of litter, go right past it, and then walk back and be late for my bus because I picked up the piece of litter. And I got into trouble when I got home because I was late. Um... And, but I really felt the Holy Spirit telling me to pick up litter. And um, 
And maybe no one, no one saw that, but I, I think that God saw it. I really do. And, um, and then, strangely enough, part of my job is now to make sure there's no litter lying around. Um, <laughs> and I do it, but, and sometimes I get laughed at, but I don't care. Um, it's fine. There's sanitizer. I can quickly clean my hands. Um, my, uh, but there are times when I can speak, preach the gospel, which is what I love to do. Um, and, um, you know, and, and God gives those moments. You would think at a Christian school there's just, okay, I'm going I'm to preach the gospel all day long. It doesn't really work like that. Kids are normal kids. They like to play. They like to play four square. They like to uh, fight over a box of orange juice, whatever. They're normal. And but sometimes, like Lichle, um came up to me, and I was teaching a class. I had finished teaching the grade sixes. I think Eden was there. And... Eden is somewhere. Huh? She was, yes, it was your reading period, Eden. And a grade 12 boy came to me and he said to me, he gave me a message from another teacher. And I just felt the Lord say, preach the gospel to him right now. And I had a free period. I had just enough time to get ready for the day. I was like, oh, I don't think so, Lord. And he said, preach the gospel. And I said, Lee have you ever heard the gospel? I wanted to spend two minutes. I know you're on the way to class. I wanted to just tell you how much God loves you. Anyway, he, he received Jesus into his heart that morning, and then I thought, I immediately thought, okay, this, I'm going to disciple this guy, he's going to meet with me at break times, he's going to be a strong disciple, he'll be coming to church. The Sunday service for all us disciple makers, by the way, is the, the grand prize of discipleship. If you can get your disciple here, then you have had a big victory, it's like winning the 100 meters in the Olympic Games. <laughs> if you can get your disciple here to listen to this music and to see these lights, you have, you have won. Okay, well done. Um, I haven't actually managed to do that yet, but um, I've tried. Um, just ask the guy who runs the electronic shop down in the mall how many times. Anyway, but... Um, so Lichle didn't get discipled, but he did managed to get two distinctions for his, final, for his matric exams. Jesus. Jesus. He is the one who raises the standard in your life. He is the one who makes you better than you ever thought you could be. Jesus. Hey. This is why I like to preach the gospel. You will, it's a hundred percent guarantee you will see an improvement in your life, in someone's life. I saw it. Everyone else that you preach to will see it. And we don't, this is not why we, pre, we, don't, we don't preach the gospel so someone can pass the exams, no. Preach the gospel so that they can have a relationship to God, with God and go to heaven one day. <laughs> this is the reality. Okay, so words and deeds. Words and deeds. Don't, don't worry about doing the little things. I do the little things every day. I sharpen that tool. I, I pick up that I sort out that classroom when everyone else has gone home. I uh, clean up that, I, I make sure that the till is locked. I, I, I clean the window before anyone gets to, if that's you, God sees, I promise you. Okay. Come on. Um, yeah. Okay, so can we please go to the next slide? Thank you to the person who's doing displays. Um, I've done that before, and, and I've actually really enjoyed it. It's an awesome way to serve in the church. It's, it's fun. Okay. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Okay, that's powerful, because um, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And what is reconciliation? Just go to the next one, please. Yes, I should have one of those remote controls. Okay, so reconciliation is to make right between two differences, to erase wrongs, to bring together in harmony. Okay, so, oh, sorry, can we just go back to that one? Have you on? Thank you. And... 
just look at that and meditate on that just for a little while. That, that it's, it's, it's a definition. It's a definition. Um, all right. So what differences... What differences are we, are we resolving? Um, well, we are different to God uh, before we meet him. We're not like him. Um, we are bent towards sin. We really are, unfortunately. And some people are fortunate enough to, to grow up in a, in a family that has very high natural standards. Some of us don't. But we're all the same. The cross is the big leveler of the playing field. And we're all, in fact, exactly the same. Okay. So when we meet Jesus, he resolves the differences between him and us. Okay. Um, He erases the wrongs. I deal with erasers all day long because I'm an art teacher. I teach drawing. And um, imagine if you could take that eraser and just erase Everything you were feeling bad about right now. Well, that's what he does. He can do it. Has done it. Has done it. As you sit there this morning, you put your faith in him. He's done it. Okay. And I know what it's like. I've been, you know, I've been in churches and I've needed to sit here and just feel God erasing some stuff. You know, you sing these songs worthy of it all and you just feel so unworthy. But I can tell you now that you are worthy. He's, a, he's the giant eraser. Bring together in harmony. Wouldn't you like to feel that you're in harmony with God and you're not just clashing with him all the time? Jesus Christ. Well, that's in fact what he's done. So he's given us this ministry. Most of us know this already, okay? But he's given us this ministry. It needs to go out there through us, okay? Guys, you can be reconciled to the creator of the universe. Um, okay, now I was going to read you a real story about prisoners, but I didn't bring it. So, um, you know, the Bible says there's no one righteous, not even one. Their mouths are open graves and their tongues are full of deceit. Okay, church, we have been reconciled to God. We were once far away, but we have been brought near. I am a friend of God. I am a child of God. Think of what you once were. Where were you? What were you doing? I just felt, I came to this church and and we'd just been on a a mission, uh, a church plant. But when we came to Word of Truth and and we really liked it from the beginning, uh, we looked at that word that said truth and we, we thought we really want the truth. We need that. And um, I was here, I was serving, like a um, gentleman at the back there is helping us. Can't remember your name, sorry, but. Um, and I just felt, I need something. I need to know that you were there with me when I was at UCT, Lord. Um, uh, when I was at university, when I got saved, when I was a 19 year old boy, and I got, went to the altar and I knelt down on the altar and I received Jesus Christ. I need to. I need to feel that you were there in that moment. Was it real? And it was worship, the worship band was practicing here, I remember. And then I just looked up and I saw a, a singer here. And she had a top, uh, a, a, um, a white sort of, what do you call it, tracksuit? Not a, it probably was a hoodie, yeah. And um, on that top said UCT Med School. Okay, and at that moment I realized that yes, he was there when I was at university when I got saved. That person is of course Mbezi, okay, and she studied at UCT Med School and she went to the same church I went when I was there. Um, and uh, you know, I was reconciled to God. You know, the truth is that all people need to be reconciled. The human heart is bent away from God. We are the villains in the story, and people need to hear about him. Okay. Paul's attitude was he was ready to preach to them 
Romans 1, chapter 1, verse 16 says, I am not ashamed. What did Paul preach? Preach repentance towards God and faith towards Jesus. Okay, I had a, a university professor, and I decided to go and speak to him one day and tell him that why I was suddenly doing so well in painting. Because it was God. That I managed to get a first-class pass in my, in my studies, and it was Jesus who helped me to do that. And I said to this professor, he was very intimidating. I said to him, look, I believe in Jesus Christ. He said to me, aren't Christians just needy people? In other words, aren't you just a needy person? And I thought, well, maybe I am. I needed to pass, otherwise my father would not have let me continue. <laughs> and, but you know what? That professor, as clearly as was wrong. Uh, would you go back to this previous, uh, the next, sorry, this next slide that was there, but I hope we'll be there now. And uh, that is a masterpiece painting. Please, the guys who are in my class, just pay attention. I'm going to tell you the real meaning of this painting. You might not learn it in the textbook. Okay, so that is by Michelangelo, the Italian Renaissance painter. He's actually a sculpt, sculptor, but he did his best, his most famous work is a painting. And... It's a picture of God touching, uh, touching Adam and uh, creating Adam. So the picture is called God creating Adam. Okay? And that's the man with, on the right is a picture of Father God. And Adam is on the left. And um, he's a youthful, strong man. Okay? And so, yes, it is a picture of God created. We all believe that God created Adam. Adam was a man on this earth 6,000 years ago. Amen. This is a true story. And we are all ancestors of him. We were. You should be able to say we were ancestors of him. Um, but what does this painting really mean? It means now. Because Jesus Christ is coming, I can touch God. Because now. I'm reconciled. You see, there's no ways I could do that on my own. There's no religion that could take me there. There's no philosophy that could do that. There's no worldview. Okay, there's no star sign or anything like that that could do anything remotely close to that. But Michelangelo's painting just means so much to me because now I can touch God. You know? Today, you will call me father, call me Abba, daddy. Okay, that's good news. Very good news. Okay, so could we please go to the next one? Okay, so this is something I've begun. Sorry. This is something I've begun to really, really enjoy, um, and it's the gospel. And when I wrote it down, I actually had to translate it from Portuguese, because I only know it in Portuguese, <laughs> but now I'm going to know it in English. Uh, why, uh, why did I only know it in Portuguese? Well, the reason was we were doing church planting in, in Brazil, which is Portuguese, the only Portuguese-speaking country in Latin America. Um, and so, okay, so do we, do, do we know, church, do we know the gospel? Do we know? We all say, I believe in the gospel, I love the gospel, I've received the gospel, I, do we know the gospel? I d actually didn't, I'll be, I confess to you, I didn't know how to say it to someone. I, you know, I, I, I always thought I was good at reaching out to people and, do you know God do you know the gospel so here it is okay the gospel is the good news that God turned man through Jesus Christ he lived the life that we should have lived he died the death that we should have died okay what does your sin deserve it deserves death it really does Three days later, he rose, proving that he is the Son of God. And he offered the gift of salvation for all of our sins. To all who repent and believe in his name. Okay. 
that I used to do too. Do we leave out the word repent? We do, don't we? In our, in our modern secular gospel presentations, don't we leave out the word repent? It sounds too confrontational. I've got to be sorry for something. It sounds too like you're guilt tripping someone. But if we leave it out, the power of the gospel is gone. Okay, there's the power. You see, the good news has another side, which is the bad news. Now, I want to be careful here because did you notice how when I started this morning, I started with something good. I said to you that Jesus has delegated his authority to us. Okay, um, Matthew 28. All right. Um, okay, there we go. We've, we've gone back to it. Okay, he's going back to the first slide. Thank you. Um, okay, so then Jesus came and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Okay, therefore go and make disciples. You see, God says something very positive to us. He says, you can do it. You can be a disciple-making machine. Okay, but... Um, you know, there is, there is the bad side of the story, and that is that we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. And please, guys, let's not, when we go out and preach to people, please, please let's not go and start with the bad news. I think it's just, it is quite hard. As an unbeliever, you're rushing on your way to work, you're late, you, you, you're trying to make a business deal, and then someone says, Something negative. I don't, you know, I, th- I think it's much better to start with the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God turned man through Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm listening. Um, he lived the life that we should have lived. You mean I, okay. So already we, 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 God's ministering to people. Um, can we just go back to that, that um, Oh, boldness. Okay, great. And then can you go another one, please? Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to go there just now. Um, so I'm speaking about boldness. And under the threat of persecution, the disciples prayed for boldness. Saul preached straight after his conversion. The only qualification you need is to be born again. You can witness. Okay. So everybody, you guys in the front, you can tell someone about Jesus. The back, they're the teenagers. Tell someone about God. You can. You're qualified. You are qualified. The older folk, praise God, you are qualified. Um, can I just say, when I was going through a tough time during uh, lockdown, I had to do remote teaching, which, which if you don't know, it was, it's very scary for me to have to do that kind of thing with technology. And I just remember I, I got into the, the we had a, a, a digital prayer meeting and I got on and I was even scared to do that. But anyway, I got on and Is, Aunt Isabel was there and, and I just confessed. I said, look, I've got a tremendous fear of that I'm not going to make it through this time of COVID. I'm gonna, not going to be able to support my family. I'm, I'm just tremendously scared. And she prayed for me. And from that moment, I was fine. And, and thank you for that. And, and I just think... Um, you know, don't be afraid to be honest with people about, about your failings and stuff. But I think, you know, um, yeah, I, I just really think that, um, sorry, I, got to, I was enjoying that, remembering just so much about that whole lockdown. Oh, the principal had a meeting with us when we returned to school. And she sat down with us and she said, I'm going to have a review of, of our um, te- technological, what's it called? Remote teaching. Um, my wife does it every day, but um, she's very good at it. Um, and, she, and I was pretty terrified, but I thought, okay, I sent the work every day. I was kind of, um, I think I'll be okay. And she said, I have had some report from the parents. And I thought, oh no, here we go. They have thanked us. They have thanked you, staff, for the remote teaching very much. They say their children really enjoyed it. And especially you, Mr. Spengler. (laughs) 
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so don't be surprised if he uses your weakness. Amen. Okay. All right. Okay, so sport, but Paul preached straight after his conversion. Okay. Um, you've probably seen the evangelist Todd White. Go and look him up. And um, he is fearless, guys. Uh, he, he, yeah, okay. So, um, going to all kinds of people, Satanists, and, um, and just telling him the good news. Um, he's got his own strategy. Please don't try this on. Uh, but go and watch. Um, go and watch and, and be inspired. Um, you know, I had some business to do at the traffic department. And I, I went in there. I think I told the story once to you guys about... Um, um, I went in there, I had some business to do anyway. Uh, I'd heard bad stories about how you have to wait there for three hours. And uh, I was not looking forward to this appointment. However, I went there and um, I was done in about 15 minutes. And then I walked out and then God said, well, what are you going to do about it? And I said, well, what do you mean? What I'm, I'm going home now. And then a bark, the dog started barking at me. Woof, 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 woof. And then I said... And then God said, go back. So I went back. And I said, what am I going to say? He said, I want you to talk to these people. What am I going to say, Lord? Um, there were some pretty grumpy people there. Uh, Jesus. This is not your, it's, it's my school holidays, Lord. I just want to be calm. I'm, I'm was quite stressed last term. No. Okay. Um, so I spoke up and I just, and God gave me words. He said, Guys, we've been through some hard times as South Africans. We've been through some very hard times as South Africans. It's looking bad, pretty bad right now. But I just believe God can make this the best country in the world. Amen. Those were his words. I, okay. Um, and I thought, okay, they're going to lynch me and punish me and all kinds of things for saying Jesus' name in, in the government department. But the government official actually shook my hand on the way out. The next... Weekend, I was with Zach, and we had a fishing competition, and the guys, were, all the fishermen were getting ready, and, um, and I saw one of the fishermen was one of the guys in the traffic department. I recognized him immediately because he, I saw his eyes. He had very fair, uh, fair eyelashes, which you could see even at five in the morning. And, um, okay. and so this... This man uh, said to me, I just want to thank you very much for what you said in the traffic department. I could tell he was, he was a bit of a rough character, he not, probably not a believer. I just want to thank you so much. Guys, when Jesus speaks through you, people will be appreciated. I would love it if one of you came up to me in the mall and said, look, are you saved, bro? Like, I, I, if you came to have a gospel conversation with me, I'd be stoked. Because I know who you guys are, I know your heart, but... Um, so would everyone else. Um, okay, it's like if you look at the story of Stephen, he went through a pretty tough time. Mighty, the first evangelist, probably a mighty man. Uh, Stephen, go read his story for inspiration. But and he actually got stoned for his beliefs. But God, supernatural boldness. It's real. Okay. Um, so. I just want to move on, um, and we're going to talk about Luke 4, verse 18 to 21. Preach the gospel. Just to summarize, you can just, um, just uh, uh, skim read it, as I say to my students. And uh, it says, preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, guys, so... Uh, church, unbelievers are blind. Okay. And they don't know that, that the Bible is true. All of it. People don't see their need because they are blind. They're taken captive through philosophy, vain deceit, traditions of men, the riches, uh, sorry, the rudiments of the world. And they're after the rudiments of the world, and they're not after Christ. 
Guys, right, so if we're not after Christ, we're blind. We have not seen him. Okay. Um, two types of people in the world. There are two types of people in the world. And don't worry, I'm university educated. I know about the world. There are two types of people in the world. Those who have met Christ and those who have not met Christ. Two. Only two. Oh, but they're they're Asians and they're Indonesians and they're Australasians and they they are two types of people in the world. Those who are born again and those who are not born again. Trust me. Those who are born again and those who are not born again. Why am I saying this? I have to remind myself when I go into public every time. I'm sorry if this is obvious to you, but when you go out into the world and there's things buzzing, traffic and billboards and shops, we don't think like this, do we? Always, do we? I'm just being honest. Okay. Um, my dear principal, Mrs. Payne, I, I use her again as an example. She speaks to me in the car because I get a lift with her to school in the mornings. Uh, she is one of those people who just keeps on giving. Even if she doesn't have, she gives. Uh, sometimes she says, well, Mr. Spengler, it's a tough month. Don't pay me petrol money this month. And you know she's having a tough month too, but she won't accept that money. Okay, so she was telling me how in the, the time of COVID, she was writing a journal. She's also quite a dedicated lady. She sort of re- t- takes notes and writes everything down. And um, she was reading that 200 million COVID deaths in South Africa. 200 million people di- got, died, guys. That was two years ago. We were already in this church. You guys, maybe, sorry, I keep on saying you guys. And please, don't, I'm not being disrespectful. It's just I'm, I'm a school teacher. So I'm used. To, so please. I apologize if I have offended you. Um, Amen. (laughs) Um, Okay. 200 deaths, um, church, at um, two years ago. The human nature is just so um, robust, isn't it, that we get over these things and we forget because we must carry on with life. We must, if we're alive, well, we've got to carry on making and living, don't we? We've got to get out there and make sure, you know, we are doing everything. Because we are kind of like designed in the image of God. We're designed to do this stuff. We're designed to keep going. But we forget 200 million people died. Just think of someone right now you know who died. I bet you can. There's a guy in school with me, my friend. The guy, he had the study next to mine in the boarding house. Passed away. Same age as me. Two young children. Wasn't poor. COVID took him. This is the reality. You don't know when someone's going to go. So why Mrs. Payne's story touched me so much was that she said that she started weeping that day in her office, all on her own. She said she was overcome with emotions. And this was the Holy Spirit showing her that people died without knowing him. You see, Jesus Christ, when he gave us responsibility, he also gave us weight. He gave us weight to carry. And the biggest weight is making sure that everybody has had the opportunity to know him. That it's the biggest weight that we, you and I can shoulder. And it is ours. It's too heavy, Lord. It's too heavy. I can't. But have you noticed that how many people are in this church? We carry it together. We are a machine for spreading the gospel. Whatever your talent is, 
maybe a painter, a dancer, or an artist, or a writer. I happen to like speaking to people, but some of you are street evangelists. I, I've spoken to you during the coffee, when you have coffee. You are, street, you are made for street evangelism. You are made for it. Go. So go. Why haven't you evangelized me yet? Maybe I was, am lost. You don't know. Go on. Come on. Okay. So I'm going to just try and wrap up real quick. Um, Josie. Josie. Thanks, bud. Okay. So I'm really stoked that it's Family Sunday. Because I'm not just talking to the experienced Christians, I'm talking to everyone, even kids. You are in your school for a very important reason. Okay? Um, miracle signs and wonders. They're not just for the grown ups, it's for you. Well done, by the way. I was stoked to hear your announcements today. It's incredible. Yeah. Let's give them a hand. Super. And Acts 2, verse 43, and chapter 3, verse 16. And fear, so fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done. Faith rose up, and people were healed. What's going to happen when you preach the gospel? Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Okay. Paul and Barnabas were preaching the gospel when the lame man from Lystra was healed. We do the preaching. He does the healing. Could I please go to the next picture? Whoops. Oh, no. Um, there should be a picture there of two people. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now I'm asking. I, I know I've been speaking a bit to the, the teenagers and the kids and that, but what? I want to go for one of the old... It's people like uh, the more experienced Christians in the house. Um, who are these people? Yeah, okay. Catherine Coleman is the young lady, and and Kenneth Hagen. Okay, now I didn't know much about them. They kind of like probably, you know, a little bit. Well, I I just okay. Um. I, I watched some stuff about, I did some research, okay, um, and Catherine Coleman had a, was an evangelist. Her job was to win souls to Christ, and she spoke at amazing places, and she, she, um, she had a ministry in the Holy Spirit. As soon as she started speaking, the Holy Spirit would come upon her. And she would say, you'd have to watch out because you guys are moving around. She might call you up and say, you've got a sore ear. Come here. God's going to deliver you right now. Boom. Um, you've, got, you've been having, uh, struggling with arthritis for three months. Come. God's going to heal you right now. And so this happened. Um, so... When we evangelize, when we reach the lost, we operate in signs and wonders, guys. Don't be surprised if God makes, wants you to heal somebody. Okay. Somebody in this church came to school and healed me last year. Thank you very much, Pastor Dave. Um, the other man is Kenneth Hagen. I don't know too much of him, but I watched a long video of him praying in tongues. I enjoy praying in tongues. I find it a heavenly language, very comforting and uh, uh, um, encouraging to my soul. And a spiritual connection. I think it's biblical. And uh, it is biblical. Kenneth Hagen prays for over an hour in tongues. And he speaks to God. Um, this, he said that we are not a defeated church. We are a triumphant church. 
People are going to listen to you. They really are. Faith, Mark 11 says, we shall move mountains. The things that we pray for will happen, will happen. You shall receive the desires of your heart. All things are possible. I have to, I'm going to end off with one more story because I have to qualify. If I'm sounding super spiritual, then one lady in this room might be saying, really, Mrs. Bengal, all things possible. Miss Halani, I don't want to embarrass you. But I had an impossible workload <clears throat> about a week ago. We had a school inspection, and um, just my things weren't ready. And um, Miss Halani, uh, she's uh, also a teacher at school, she said to me, Mr. Spengler, come here. Bring your file. <laughs> yes, Miss Halani. Where's your program of assessment? Why isn't that signed? Go to Mrs. Payne now and sign it. <laughs> Mrs. Pengler, it says on the timetable that you're teaching a, de a demonstration for Umalozi. What are you going to teach? Well, I, I'm going to teach reading, ma'am. But, but what are you going to teach? Um, Literature, man. Uh. Okay. Here's a worksheet. Go and photocopy it. How many people in your class? I'll go and photocopy it. Start off with the worksheet, Mr. Spengler. Let them connect the dots, Mr. Spengler. And then keep them busy. And then go and talk to the auditor. So I think we sat there till about 7 o'clock at night. And, um, and I got everything done. Um, I believe the school's going to get its license, amen, uh, for seven years. Really trusting God for that. And um, I just think, you know, if we work together, all things are possible, you know. Um, great. Okay. L let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've done for, for us. That you've, you said you'll give us the desires of our heart, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Father, for that, for every individual in this room. You're waiting to meet them right where they're at, Lord. Lord, help us to be faithful in bringing your message to the ends of the earth, Lord. Lord, to whatever country you may call us to. Lord, I pray for the young people, that they would hear from you, Lord. I pray from this house we would go out church planting, Lord. From this house we would go out leaders, Lord. From this house we would go out presidents and people who can change the world for good. I pray, Lord, that your gospel would go far and wide through this world and use this house, Lord mightily, as even as we're faithful to gather every Sunday, Lord, and celebrate your presence, Lord. Pray that you'd also send us out to take whole towns, whole cities, Lord, whole nations for God. And every single person would be a Bible-believing warrior for Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. Cool. Um, I just I do want to thank the Lord because I left quite a few of my materials at home so um, um, he guided me through that and I just want to really also just uh, remind you about the missions training after church at the back with Tess and Niall um, I'm sure they're going to tell you um, I'm sure they're going to share a lot of their wisdom from, um, you know, from their own missionary travels and their experience of planting churches and reaching out to the lost. And then also just join us for a cup of tea afterwards and um, meet somebody new and encourage one another and have a great day. Yeah. Yeah.